You're listening to the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast with Darnielle Jervie Harmon. If this is your first time joining me for the podcast, here's what I'd like for you to know about me. First and foremost, I am the absolute best at combining spiritual principles with business growth strategy to turn entrepreneurs into multiple six and seven figure CEOs. Second, I don't do hustle and grind. I do spirituality and systems. And you might be wondering, what in the devil is an incredible factor? And if so, I invite you to go all the way back to the very first episode of this podcast. It's aptly titled, Exactly What is the Incredible Factor? There's even a cool worksheet that I want you to do that will help you to find yours. Oh, I will likely say some things that will make you laugh, a few things that could make you cry, and definitely make you question if you are ready to leverage your incredible factor. Remember, I'm a coach, and my job is to tell you what you don't want to hear and show you what you don't want to see, all to help you to become who God created you to be. I'm so excited that you're here. This episode is powered by the fourth quarter comeback. Did you know that more sales happen in the fourth quarter than all year long? Now you have an unprecedented opportunity to join me for a complimentary training that will help you to prepare to maximize the fourth quarter. Secure your seat now at darnielle.com forward slash comeback. A quick shout out to the Six Figure Cashflow Club. Listen, listen, listen. I am so loving what we are creating in the Cash Flow Club. We are having fun. We are talking about business and we're talking about seriously how to live your best life. We are not just entrepreneurs and small business owners. We are powerful conduits in this marketplace that are designed to shake the planet. So I invite you to join us on Facebook in our exclusive community for training, laser coaching, and strategies to help you leverage your incredible factor and unlock six-figure cash flow in your business. And you can get started today by visiting sixfigurecashflowclub.com. Woo! Let me just tell you, I'm really excited about today's episode. Last week, I literally was in hot Atlanta. It was so hot. Oh my gosh, it was ridiculously hot. And while I was there, I was working with a group of entrepreneurs and small business owners who want to learn, wanted to learn how to profit from live events. So I thought it'd be only right that in this episode, I answer that age old business question. What's more important, sales or profit? I mean, we had people come from all over the country to hang out with me for three days with myself and my feature speakers as we walked step by step through how to profit from live events. Everybody and their grandmother wants to profit. But what's more important, sales or profit, right? It's one of those chicken or the egg kinds of questions. Now, if you ask me, both are important. But I also think that if you've ever asked yourself this question, it could mean that something in your business is wrong. In fact, your business is in trouble. I will tell you that one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever received about doing business was one of the simplest things I've ever heard. You won't believe me when I tell you. Let me tell you. Charge more than it costs. Let me repeat that. Charge more than it costs. That's like, duh, right? Like, Why would anybody want to be in business and not charge more than it costs? And while it seems so simple, and it may be a little unnecessary to state it, an alarming amount of small business owners do not charge more than it costs. I mean, it's just the facts. You've heard me share the statistics based on the IRS and the Small Business Administration before that of the approximately 28 million small businesses in the United States about 23 million of them are what they call non-employer entities. And we in the marketplace call them solopreneurs, meaning they're working without employees. Of that 23 million non-employer entities, approximately 90% of them are not generating $100,000 a year. That's crazy to me, right? Like It's like business poverty. Because in my opinion, and I'm gonna step on a few toes and I might even make a few people upset, If you are not generating six figures a year, you don't even have a business. You have a very expensive hobby. 
And while that might hurt your feelings and make you a little upset, it is the truth and it is a big problem. And it's because most non-employer entities and even a few other businesses that do have employees do not understand how to reach profitability in their businesses. And that's a big problem because honestly, profit is how we keep score. You'll say, hear me say that a few more times during this episode. As a business coach and mentor, I've had the pleasure of working with thousands of small business owners. I'll get to work with many every single year and many of whom prior to working with me had no idea how to experience profit in their business other than lowering their expenses. And don't get me wrong, lowering your ex expenses can definitely create profit, but it really shouldn't be the only way that you experience profit. Profit should occur at the transactional level. You know what I mean by that? Every single product or service you sell should have profit on it. I mean, this is a game changer. If you would just allow yourself to grasp the feasibility of making profit by the product or service, I promise you, you'll be leveraging your incredible factor before you know it. Every single product or service that you offer should have a profit margin built in. We'll talk more about that. And the reason why this is so important is because profit is how we keep scoring business. And there is also an important thing to mention here that there's no way you can experience profit if you're not selling. Trust me, I get it. I spent the first part of my career in corporate America where I worked in a Fortune 500 financial services company. And within the parameters of that company, I learned the ins and outs and the ebbs and flows of business. I learned about key performance indicators. I learned about everything that goes into determining a company's viability. And then I came out into entrepreneurship. Well, if you can call it that, my first entrepreneurial venture, as many of you know, was Mary Kay Cosmetics, right? Mary Kay Cosmetics was awesome and amazing. It was a great training ground for the work that I get to do today. And quite honest, had it not been for Mary Kay, I don't know how long it would have taken me to create Incredible One Enterprises. And although I only spent about two years full-time in Mary Kay, I learned a lot of valuable lessons about sales and more importantly, how to sell without ever selling. I'll probably do a future episode on the podcast about the fact that sales is not a dirty word. We'll talk about that later because this time around, we're talking about the difference or profit versus sales, right? Again, profit is how we keep scoring business, but there's no way to experience profit if sales do not occur. And sadly, most small business owners put so much emphasis on sales and not enough on profit. Sales in and of itself should not be the focus of your business. I know. <laughs> Somebody just fell out of their chair because you're like, what in the world are you talking about, Darnell? It has to be the right sales in large enough numbers to positively impact the goals a business has to ensure that growth will be the result. If you've been focused more on selling and less on profitability, there are probably three reasons that you want to make a shift in the way that you're showing up in your business. And, and this, quite honestly, when you think about profit versus sales, this is really what it all comes down to. And just for the sake of definitions, let's define profit, right? Old school business says that profit is what's left over after expenses have been paid, right? So you, you charge whatever you charge, you take out all of your expenses to perform that service or to deliver the product, and what's left over is profit. Now I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to give a great big shout out to Mike McCallowitz. If you know Mike, tell him Darnielle said, what's up? And his book, Profit First, changed my life. I'm actually working really, really hard to get him on the podcast because I love Profit First. It changed my life. It began to make me think differently as an entrepreneur and small business owner. When I was in corporate America, the way that I looked at profitability was entirely different than when it was my own business, my own coins, right? My own cash flow. Everything began to change when now everything was on me. And where we go wrong as corporate America dropouts turn entrepreneurs and small business owners is we still think like employees. And we fail to realize that being self-employed or being a small business owner brings a whole nother set of challenges and expenses. And so if you're thinking the old school way of sales minus expenses equals profit, your life as you know it, or as you want it to be, is going to, it's going to take a while for it to catch up.
So enter Mike Michalowicz and Profit First. Again, one of the books that have changed my life. In his book, he talked about the fact that we should profit first, hence the name, right? And I could get down with that, right? I, I'm, a, I'm a God girl and I, I tithe. And so that means I pay, put my 10% to the side off the top line of what comes into my business. So I could totally get excited about profiting first, right? And so Mike says that the new formula is sales minus profit equals expense. Boom, boom, boom. Did I like just change your life? If you have not read the book, I highly recommend you pick it up. When you do, you will literally see my case study and testimonial in the front of that book. Now, prior to meeting Profit First, the book, and following the process as Mike lays it out, I was already putting about 10% aside every month, but that 10% was to cover everything in my business. And what I learned from Profit First is what really began to, to change the way I show up. In one year's time, I grew my profit account, took to six-figure cash flow. And you guys know I stand on my pedestal for unlocking six-figure cash flow. And so I highly, highly, highly recommend that book. So much so that I teach um, the process to my clients because it, I just think it's that important. And here's what I know. If you have been focused more on selling and less on being profitable, there are three things you really need to pay attention to. Because if you don't, you're going to set yourself up to be on a trajectory that keeps you broke in your business. And I don't know about you, but did you go into business to be broke? I mean, I'll talk about myself, right? I started my business because I wanted to decrease the likelihood that my viability would be tied to an organization that could decide any given day of the week to cut me off at the ankles and I would no longer have a job. I became an entrepreneur because I wanted to remove the glass ceiling and I wanted to take the cap off of my learning that had been put there by corporate America. You know, I was just as talented as I am today when I was working for someone else, but I made a fraction of what I earn today because I took the limits off of what it is that would be possible for me. So let's talk about the three reasons why you might want to shift as you Think about what's more important, profit versus sales. Again, just so we're clear, they're both important, right? There's no way you can profit if you don't have sales. But let me tell you what's at stake if you focus more on the sales process and less on experiencing a profitability. Number one, you will undercharge. If your pricing is not based on experiencing profit on the front end, you will consistently be behind the eight ball because you're not charging more than it costs, which will mean that achieving a profitable return on any sale will be a problem for you. In my personal opinion, every single sale should be profitable. And the only way that that can happen is if you do two things. Number one, you have to have a clear indication of your costs and expenses by the profit, the product or service line. And two, you have, or actually there's three things. The second thing you have to be clear on the amount of profit that you desire or need in your business. And you want to make sure that it's a part of your pricing for profitability. And then number three, you have to be crystal clear about the transferable result that you bring to the table. Now, listen, if you are listening to me right now and you are not driving as you take in this episode of the podcast, I want you to write that down. Transferable results. This <laughs> is what separates entrepreneurs from CEOs of companies. Transferable result. When your prices are based on what you bring to the table that people will be able to leverage over and over and over, you can charge way more than you're charging right now. I used to hold a workshop called Get Paid, How to Package Price and Successfully Close the Sale. And in that workshop, I would teach business owners how to package and price and ultimately close more sales in their business. And as a part of that program, I gave them a pricing formula that would ensure that they experience profit on every single transaction. This incredible one is a game changer. And when I meet business owners who still think like employees that charge by the hour, I realize that all they're really getting ahead in is becoming broke in their business, right? Like, I mean, again, we did not quit our jobs to work as slaves in our businesses. We quit our jobs to have some freedom and flexibility, right? to be able to control what we had access to when we desired to have access to it. So the first thing that you have to be cognizant of if you're focused more on sales than you are on profitability 
is that more than likely you're undercharging. You are not charging enough. I mean, how many times have you charged somebody something that in the moment you thought it was good until you began to do the work? <laughs> My hand's in the air because I have. Let me tell you just a quick story. This is probably um, one of the very first times when this message drove home for me, and it was because of that transferable result that I was talking about. Right. So I remember working with a client and this client paid me about, it was a coaching program for three months. So they might've paid me, I don't know, 900 or a thousand dollars. This is back in the day when I was charging 350 a month. So whatever that comes out to for a minimum three month commitment. And over the course of the time in that 350 a month, I over deliver. Now I didn't over deliver because I didn't believe in the value of the price that I set. I over delivered because that's what I learned when I was in corporate America. I was taught that you treat yourself or you treat the customer in a different way, right? And you think of yourself as a customer. And so you provide the customer with everything that you would desire if you were in fact that customer, because it's the best way to breed loyalty and to have customers for life, right? And so I adapted that into my business. And so I remember charging about 350 a month and I'm working with the client. And when I quoted it and the client paid in full, so $1,200 or whatever it was, I had that amount up front and sounded really, really good. It was so exciting. But then <laughs> the problem with that is I gave them so much for that $1,200 that it actually started to backfire on me. I started to feel a little resentful of my client. Have you ever felt resentful of your client? Yeah, that happened to me. So much so that when it was time to call, or it was time to pick up the phone and have a conversation with the client, I was like, I don't want to talk to this client. Like create a diversion or any reason for me to not have to talk to them. So I realized in that moment that I really needed to stop stop undercharging. And I needed to get clear about what it is that I brought to the table and what it really cost me to provide the service at the level that I wanted to in full excellence for the client. Right. And you've probably seen pricing formulas and you probably have your own. I hope you're not just pulling prices out of your woo-ha. I hope you are honestly thinking it through, but whatever you're thinking, I want you to add to it. I typically, when I'm having a conversation with a client and we're talking about their pricing, I end up doubling their rates often because they're just not charging enough. You cannot just charge based on cost of goods sold or any other direct costs that you have and your general and administrative costs and your overhead. That cannot be your price because if it is your price, you're so leaving money on the table, which brings me to number two. You will leave money on the table if you are more focused on sales than you are on profitability. Profiting by the transaction is the key to making sure that you don't leave money on the table. Without thinking about profit at the transaction level, you'll make it much more challenging to experience growth in your business. I mean, every single client should pay you so much more than it costs for you to perform the service. Like if you add everything up and everything added up comes out to $2,500, I would tell you to double it. Or if you're not going to double it, at least increase it by uh, 50%, charge more than it costs. That is how you put your, position yourself to be able to get ahead and you allow yourself to be able to bring on clients. Everything really changes when you think about being more profitable and even more sales. Because at the end of the day, you could have less sales, but if you're charging more than it costs, you could make more money. I've seen this happen time and time again for clients. And the third thing that you need to be cognizant of, if you're focused more on sales than on profit, you need to know that you're going to work way too hard for way too little. When you're not thinking about being profitable, your prices will barely meet your needs, right? We've already established that. Remember, you're an expert. You're a specialist, not a generalist. And while the amount of latitude that you have for your products may be slim, think about the manufacturer's suggested retail price if you offer products. You should always focus on having a margin, right? And so even with retail products, they charge 50% more. Right? Wholesale is 50% less than whatever you're going to retail it for. So in service-based businesses, in my personal expert opinion, and I am the expert of the hour because you're listening to me on the podcast, you literally should be charging anywhere between 60 to 85% more than the service all comes out to so that you don't have to work so hard. Now, I'll admit, 
Nine times out of 10, the first time you go to do this, you're not going to be successful because your mindset is going to still be thinking like an employee, right? You thought that if you charged $100 an hour, you'd be doing something in your business. But I think we can both agree that you've come to learn that charging $100 an hour is really like $22 an hour, which means that you've got a glorified job and you're not really building a business. But you've got to learn how to charge more than a call than it costs because if you once you do everything will continue to will begin to change for you if you don't your business will not grow and again you'll work way too hard for way too little this is one of the reasons why i work with my clients to position their brands to sell premium services you get to earn more while working way less i mean i want you to think of it this way depending upon where you are in your business like if you're where i am right now i am building a lifestyle based business i'm not I've never been a hustler and grinder, right? I'm not built for the hustle. But today, I'm not working nearly as hard. There was a time, probably about, what is this, 2019? So probably about five years ago when I had more than 200 clients, right, in my business. But that's not where I am today. Today, I'm all about working smarter and not harder and charging premium prices so that I can work with less clients every single year because I'm in a lifestyle based business, right? I'm focused on earning a whole lot, but working way less as my husband and I be prepared to expand our family. Everything is changing, right? And while how you operate will be different based on where you are in the trajectory of your business, the one thing that shouldn't be different is looking at your business from its the point of profitability. Now, this is a whole nother conversation, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop this nugget right now. There also comes a time in your business where although you are experiencing profitability based on the way that you live and your lifestyle, you don't look like it, right? I'm not gonna get into it now, but I will do a future episode on the, the point at which you want to begin to employ insulation measures in your business so that your income becomes insulated by the business and you actually don't look as profitable, although everything that you crave is within reach for you. This is one of the things that I talk about with my clients in the Leverage and Scale Mastermind, that you have to be at 100K or more to even get into. And it's because the level of conversation changes once you get a handle on sales versus profitability. And again, you have to sell. Nothing happens until somebody sells something, right? So you've got to be doing your part to sell. And the best of us sell without being salesy. We find a need and we fill it. We find a problem that exists in the marketplace and we build out a full-blown solution about that. And then we let our ideal prospects know that we can solve their problem and they then rise up to meet us where we are at our premium prices in order to get us to solve the problem for them. It, it's really an amazing continuum. And I really do hope that one day you get to experience life at that level. But for now, what's more important, profit or sales? They're both important. And your job is to make sure that everything that you are selling offers transferable results to your clients so that you can leverage your products and service in order to get people to pay you more than it costs so that you can stop working too hard in your business and you can also stop leaving money on the table. I get excited when I think about what's possible for you, Incredible One, if you would just do the work to leverage your incredible factor. I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you for joining me for the Leverage Your Incredible Factor Business Podcast. I'd really love to help you grow a business that funds the life you crave while doing work that shakes the planet. Get started today by applying for a discovery session with me or a member of my team at darnielle.com forward slash session. And if you enjoyed our time together, do yourself a favor, head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Until next time, remember, you do deserve a business that funds the life you crave. Take care.